door. He's a tugboat and a friendly tugboat too. A friendly tugboat too. Oh, Theodore likes to do the things that friendly tugboats do. Pushing and a pulling in the great big harbor in the great big world is so much fun. So many brand new things to discover. Waking with the sun, gotta get the job done. Oh, Theodore and Emily. Boda, Hank and George and the harbor master too. Hello. I'm just cleaning up all my special equipment. But this old harbor master's whistle of mine it needs a little extra hard work. I think that that has got it. I think that's nice and shiny. Okay, what's next? Oh, this is special. This is called a compass. You see, there's a little tiny arrow down there. Well, that's the most important part because that little tiny arrow always points in the same direction, no matter which way I turn it. Watch. Yep, I can always tell which way I'm going with my good old compass, but I have to be very gentle with it because it's it's kind of delicate. Yeah, some things you have to be more gentle with than others. Just like tugboats. Oh, yes. You can't treat all tugboats just exactly the same. And Theodore found that out the day that George made a funny noise. Would you like me to tell you about it? A big ship whose name was Caraquet was arriving in the big harbor. Theodore, Hank, roared George. Hurry up, we don't want to be late. Theodore and Hank tooted back. We're hurrying, and put more puff in their propellers. Ahoy, Garrett, boomed George in his biggest voice. I'm George, and I'm the tug in charge today. And we're helping, whistled Theodore and Hank. Proceed to the back of the ship commanded George. And remember, be careful. Well, George smiled his good old George smile and blew and blasted his good old George whistle. He just loved moving big important ships. Hank was floating into place when his engine backfired and made a loud noise. That's the funniest noise I ever heard, laughed Caraquette. Well, no one said anything for a moment. And then, suddenly, George burst out laughing. <laughs> laughed George. Hank made a funny noise. Theodore began to laugh, too. Then Caraquette. Even Bedford Bowie swayed back and forth and ding-dinged his little bell. He was laughing so hard at Hank. Hank backed up again. This time, he made that loud, funny noise on purpose, just to make everyone laugh. He was laughing too, the hardest of all. Ha 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 Hank. Well, this made everyone laugh and whistle even more. Ha 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 Laughed George. And that's when it happened. George's whistle made a loud noise, the way it sometimes did when he laughed and whistled at the same time. Oh, no, that's the funniest noise I ever heard, laughed Caraquette. <laughs> laughed Hank. George made a funny noise, too. Well, this time, everyone began to laugh at George. They laughed and laughed so hard, tears were falling from their eyes. Make that funny noise again, George, yelled Hank. Make it again. The only noise they heard was the sound of George's engine rumbling to leave. Hey, said Hank. Where's George going? George? Called Theodore. Well, George rumbled off in a big cloud of smoke and didn't say a word. What's the matter with George? Hank asked quietly. But no one knew.
Well, this isn't like George at all, said the dispatcher, when Theodore told him what had happened. He never leaves a job before he's finished. We don't even know why he left, said Theodore. The dispatcher turned towards Kara Kent. She was still waiting at the harbor entrance. We have to get that ship in, he said, sounding very concerned. But we can't move her without George, said Hank. Everyone looked around, hoping George would come floating up at any moment, smiling his good old George smile and blowing and blasting his good old George whistle. But there was no blowing or blasting or smiling. There was no George. Theodore and Hank, said the dispatcher. Report back to Caraquette. If George doesn't return soon, I will have to send that ship home again. Theodore and Hank didn't say anything as they floated off, but inside, they both knew that sending a ship home was a very serious matter. We always bring ships in on time, said Hank finally. That's what tugboats do, don't we, Theodore? But Theodore was busy thinking about George. What happened to George? He wondered out loud. Theodore suddenly began to float away. Now Theodore's leaving too, groaned Hank. Oh, this is turning out to be a very bad day. Well, at that very moment, George was leaving the harbor. He had a special collection of stuff with him. He had his old lobster traps and worn out bumpers and fishing bobs all piled up high in his lifeboat. Howdy doody there, George, hollered Owen, the giant oil rig. What brings you to these parts? Shh, Owen, whispered George. I'm coming to live under you and I don't want anyone to find me. Oh, hollered Owen. Why, I'll be as quiet as a sleeping snail on a stack of seaweed. Just you watch how quiet I'll be. Yes, sirree, Bob. I'll be as quiet as a snoring squid on a jellyfish pillow. Hey, I'll be as quiet as a barnacle. No, a blowfish. Owen is a very noisy oil rig. George looked around at his new home. It sure was empty. There were no other tugboats around. Everything was still and silent. A bladder work, um, banana, uh, uh, except for Owen, of course. Well, I don't want to see anyone anyway, George grumbled to himself. Or listen to anyone either, he added, as Owen continued naming all kinds of things he was going to be as quiet as. You see, George's smokestack was still stinging, the way it did when everyone had laughed at him, and that wasn't a very nice feeling at all. So he just lowered his anchor and turned off his engine. I'm going to stay right here, said George quietly. No one will ever find me. Hi, George. Theodore, said George, very surprised. Well, how'd you find me here? Oh, replied Theodore. Under Owen is it's my special thinking place, too. Oh, said George. Well, I didn't know that. I guess I've never done so much special thinking before. And then he was silent again. Are you going somewhere, George? asked Theodore. He could see all of George's favorite stuff stacked in his lifeboat. Oh, I'm, I'm living here now, answered George in a very quiet voice. Oh, said Theodore, not at the Great Ocean Dock. Well, Theodore went on, it's kind of a nice place to live, I, I guess. I like
like a gym dandy, hollered Owen from up top. It's so nice and peaceful out here. Oops! Oh, oh, oh. I'm supposed to be quiet so no one finds George. Sorry about that, George. Well, George tried to look upset, but he had to grin a little. Oh, it sure was silly. And that made Theodore grin, too. I guess you'll have lots of laughs living out here with Owen, said Theodore. Well, George looked serious again, then, in a small voice, not like George's big, boomy voice at all, he said, well, at least no one will laugh at me. Now Theodore understood. George was upset because everyone had laughed at him when he made that funny noise. Maybe I'll, I'll go live somewhere else. But, said Theodore, we were all laughing at Hank when he made that funny noise. Well, said George, thinking about it, Hank kind of likes it when everyone laughs at him. And you don't, said Theodore softly. No, replied George, trying to make his voice sound big and boomy again, but inside he really felt, well, very small. No, I really don't, Theodore. Theodore moved really close to George. Then Theodore gave George a gentle nudge with his bumpers. No one meant to make fun of you, George. And we all really miss you, George. Just then, the tugs heard a deep horn. It was Caraquette, still waiting out near the harbor entrance for the tugs to bring her in. Well, you small tugs can't bring in that great big ship by yourselves, said George. And then, like magic, the dark cloud seemed to pass from George's face. Theodore smiled a great big smile, too. George let out a loud whistle. Let's go, Theodore, shouted George. I'll be as quiet as a cat and catfish in a cradle of cattails till everyone gets back, Owen bellowed in a voice so loud it shook the whole harbor. Yes, siree, Bob! Well, Theodore and George started to laugh and whistle at Owen. And then... It happened again. George's whistle made that loud noise the way it sometimes did when he laughed and whistled at the same time. Hey! <laughs> and that's the funniest noise I ever heard! roared Owen. Well, Owen began to laugh. But then he saw that George looked very serious. Theodore quietly floated up next to George and gave him a gentle nudge with his bumpers. Well, <laughs> it is kind of a funny noise, George said at last. And then, George smiled. He smiled his good old George smile, and then he blew and blasted his good old George whistle. And soon, everyone was laughing along with him. They laughed and laughed so hard, tears were falling from their eyes. You know, his compass here is a lot like George. I have to treat it gently sometimes, but really, it's a wonderful friend to have around. Still pointing in the same direction. Good old compass. You know, with a little help from my compass, I could find anything. Well, back to my cleaning. Thanks for visiting us here in the Big Harbor, and we'll see you all again next time. Now, I can find everything with my compass except my polishing cloth. What's that? Look at my pocket. He's a tugboat and a friendly tugboat too. A friendly tugboat too. Oh, Theodore likes to do the things that friendly tugboats do. Pushing and a pulling in the great big harbor in the great big world is so much fun. So many brand new things to discover. Waking with the sun, gotta get the job done. Oh, Theodore and Emily, Vodak, Hank and George and the harbor master too.